Welcome everyone to yin yoga. We're going to do um, yin yoga with sort of this um, awareness that the winter solstice is right around the corner. It's tomorrow at the time that this is being filmed. And the winter solstice is about um, the longest night of the year. And then from that point, the, the day after the winter solstice and all the days ahead, um, it, it becomes lighter and lighter. We get a little more daylight every single day leading up to the spring. Um, so I invite you to maybe think in terms of kind of the light within us, or we'll be working with light today um, in our yin practice. So we'll go ahead and find a seat. And as we sit, take a moment to get comfortable. Uh, maybe sit on a prop if you'd like. And we'll either rest our palms face down on the lap or face up. And we'll take just a moment to find our breath, taking a full breath in and exhaling all the air out. And we'll do that again, inhaling fully. and exhale completely. And one more time, breathing in. And breathing out. And we'll imagine there is a light above us. It, if it's right now, it's evening at the time we're recording this. So you might think of moonlight if um, it's evening, or if it's daylight, you might think of sunshine above your head, whatever resonates with you. Start to pick up on that warm glowing light above your head. And I invite you to sweep your arms up to meet that warm glowing light. So your palms are facing each other, the arms are reaching straight up to the sky. You start to feel this warm light collecting down in between your palms, getting a little warmer, a little more vibrant. Maybe the top of your head feels warm by that bright light as well. Collecting some of that light. And then once you feel like you've collected a bit of light in between your palms, you'll flip your palms so they face away from each other. And then very slowly, you'll pull down that light across your body, kind of like a cloak or maybe an egg shape encompassing your body. And then once your fingers touch down to the ground, imagine that light circles into the ground below your legs. And then we'll take our hands together at our hearts and just bow some gratitude for ourselves for showing up today to practice. Take an inhale. And as you exhale, release your hands, open up your eyes. So we'll address uh, the hips and the low back today. We're going to start kneeling. So I would recommend patting your knees with a blanket if you have something like that. We're gonna to come to hands and knees. We're gonna check in uh, with ourselves and find a bit of child's pose. Knees wide as your mat, big toes touch. Sit your hips back to your heels and start to walk your hands forward to the front of your mat. You can lower your head all the way down or maybe you stick a prop and you slide it under your head or under your chest. We'll take 10 deep breaths here. Now, if you get into this pose and your low back feels tender, instead of taking your knees wide, take them more uh, closer together, like hip width apart. That can help support your low back here.
Let's take a deep breath together. And as you exhale, we'll slide our hands in and make our way up to a tabletop. We're going to stand on our knees next. So you'll walk your hands in. Now I'm gonna come out of frame for this, but you'll 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 catch along um, just by my verbal cue. So I'll face you for this. We're gonna take our right leg out to the right, take our right hand to the right leg and start for us uh, to go into a side stretch. And lean back a little bit. It's like you're yawning the left side of your body. You can move your head around if that feels good. And then we'll switch our arms forward and then around and now, you have your left hand on the ground, right arm reaches overhead. So this is called stargazer. You're kind of standing into that right foot, leaning back a little bit, opening that side. And then again, like before, we'll sweep our arms forward around and take that right hand to the right leg. This is known as gate pose. Ooh. And we'll do one more star, star gazer. You're gonna sweep the arms forward around, take that left hand down, right arm. We're gonna stay in stargazer and I'm gonna turn my body to the side so you can see this a bit better. All right, so as you're leaning back in your side bend, you'll sweep your arms forward and now you're gonna plant your hands right in front of you. So your shoulders are right over your wrist, your back is flat, and that right leg is still long out to the side. So you can peek at your right foot. You want it around the same plane as your right hip. And now press into your right hand, push the ground away, take your left arm up, twisting away from that straight leg. Take a big breath in, reach up. And as you exhale, weave your left arm across your mat, left shoulder touches down, left temple touches down, your right fingertip push into the ground to help steady you here. You might scoot your straight leg in a bit so you feel a little more grounded in your right foot. We're gonna stay here for a bit. So you can certainly steady your hand into the floor or take your right arm up and hook the back of your hand to your low back. Breathing under that left shoulder blade, like all your awareness could move there. And you might, it might help you to think of wherever we're stretching or wherever you're noticing sensation, Maybe imagine a bit of light there, a little bright, sunshiny light in that area. It's like our yin practice is filling our body up with space and light tonight. Space for new possibility. Take your right hand down to the floor, press yourself up to hands and knee, and then we'll take a couple of cat cows here. So you'll lift your tailbone up, lift the heart up as you inhale. And as you exhale, you'll round your back. And we'll do that twice more. Inhale, lift the heart, lift the tail. Curl the tailbone under, round the spine. Last one. All right, so this is gonna get interesting. We're gonna round our spine and you are gonna find child's pose again, but you're gonna keep your right leg out to the side. So you'll rock back, left hip to left heel. You can take your forearms and your forehead down towards the ground, or if that feels a little much, you could maybe kind of hold your cheeks in your hands. You can even put a prop underneath you. So this can be quite the hamstring stretch for the right leg. So if you need to elevate your torso to make this a little more accommodating, Please do, because we'll be here for about a minute. Again, you can think of that golden light running across that inner thigh.
We'll be here for 10 more breaths. We'll slowly make our way up. Just coming up however you need to. And I like to lie on my belly after that. I don't like to keep my hips flexed any more um, than they already are because we're going to do all of that again on the other side. But you come into whatever version of a rested neutral place for your body that you want. We'll take about 10 breaths on our belly, on our back in child's pose. And so not only do we have winter solstice, but in a couple days, um, we have a new moon and that also signifies, um, in a way, moving to light or newness, rather, just planting seeds and watching them grow as they are brought to light, as light kind of nurtures these seeds of intention. Let's take three more breaths here. And I like to think of yin yoga, we're opening our bodies up to possibility. We're clearing, we're processing, we're making space. So just I invite you to kind of maybe ponder what the new moon, what you might want to bring with this new cycle of the moon into your life. And then we'll come out and we'll do it all again on the other side. So I'll face you initially. Um, so from a tall kneel position, you'll take your left leg out to the side left hand to that left leg. And then you'll slide down, opening through that side body, any amount you choose. Doesn't have to be the biggest stretch. And then we'll sweep our arms around and come into that stargazer. And again, sweeping around and over and finding that nice side bend on the first side. And then back to stargazer and you'll stay in stargazer. I'm gonna turn my body in a different direction for what we do next, but we'll be in stargazer together. And then we'll take both hands directly in front of us. So our shoulders are lined up right over our wrist. Our back is flat. That left leg is still extended. Then we'll press into our left hand. Take the right arm up. Big twist. Inhale, reach up. Grow a little taller to the sky. Exhale, weave your right arm across your mat. Right shoulder and temple. Touch down. You want most of the weight in the shoulder and the legs, only some in the head. So you might, you know, crawl yourself a little more forward on your mat or a little more back, depending on the weight. And then push into your left fingertips to help rotate you even more. Maybe you take that left arm up and hook it behind your low back. As long as you feel steady, then breathe behind your right shoulder blade where you're noticing a stretch, perhaps.
Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, press yourself up back to that tabletop. Hands line up right under shoulders, back is flat. And then from here, starting from your tailbone, curl your tailbone under. Let that create a whipple, whipple wave effect in your back, chin to chest, and then let it unfurl with the tailbone. So to feel that back bend, inhale, look up, exhale, rounding. Do that two more times. Let it help undo what might be bound up in your spine. Inhaling to lift. The next time you exhale, you'll round, and then you'll sit your hip back toward your heel and find your version in child's pose. So it could be a prop under your body or just on your forearms or forehead down. We want to stretch, never a strain. So listen to that amount of inner thigh stretch you're feeling and uh, accommodate yourself if you need. We've got about 10 more breaths here. You can come out early if you choose. Otherwise, I invite you to get even heavier in your bones. You can either come out of this on your belly, on your back, whatever feels easy and comforting. And we'll pause and check in with ourselves. Notice what warmth or what light perhaps we've created inside. Noticing that feeling of blood flow or energy flow throughout your body. We compress some areas of the body and then we release those compressed areas and that actually hydrates the tissues. It's very healthy for the tissue. And then we'll come up. We'll um, just very briefly touch on our fire toes, a little foot stretch. Now this time of year when our bodies are just colder from the winter, just everything gets a little tighter, a little easier. So we're gonna go easy um, into this next foot stretch. So you have your knees together, feet together, tuck all 10 toes under, and then just start to shift back hips to heels. See what it's like to stay here and breathe. And if it feels good and you want, only if you want more, can then start to work yourself more upright, but you do still want to remain heavy against your toe joints and heels. So you want to allow that surrender. And we'll take about 10 breaths here. So 10 breaths feels like a lot. You're biting off right now. Maybe ease out of it a little bit.
Notice if maybe one foot feels tighter than the other, you can kind of shift to one foot and then shift to the other foot a little bit. All right, let's take our last breath here. Ah, and then come forward, untuck the toes, tap it out, give a little blood flow to the feet. We're gonna come into uh, deer pose and I have a big blanket already set up. So I'm gonna use that to pad my shins, but uh, I would recommend maybe opening up a blanket if you're on a hard surface for this. Um, or just have a blanket close by as you need. Um, so, so blanket on your mat, perhaps, and then maybe another prop, like something bulkier to possibly lay your torso on. Okay, so we're going to start in a cross-legged seat. And then you're going to pick up your left knee and you're going to bend the left knee back. So your left shin is parallel to the left wall. And normally when we do pigeon or a uh, mermaid or deer pose, mermaid in Pilates, deer pose in yin. <laughs> and um, normally we'll have the sole of the foot to the inner uh, thigh. You can certainly do that. But I think there's something really interesting about making this uh, bigger. Uh, so making it more like you're trying to make two 90 degree angles with your knees. See if you can find kind of maybe a wider version today and just see how that works for your body. You can always shift it anytime you need. So we're kind of opening it. If you flex the foot, it kind of makes it clearer uh, to create these 90 degree angles. So one butt cheek will be on the mat, the other one will be lifted. That's very common to feel that here. And so, We'll take a prop if you're using one. And what we're gonna do next is we're gonna fold over the front shin. So you'll simply lean forward and you could you know, crouch down onto your forearms or elbows. You could stick a prop over your leg and fold over, or you could even take that prop in front of your legs and kind of fold in. So you get to decide and play with there's something very pigeon-like about this pose. So if you, if you notice that in your outer hip, you're, um, you're definitely in the right spot. We'll be here for also um, a little bit over um, a little under two minutes. So this will be a longer held pose. You can always come out early. Because this is a long held pose, do make yourself comfortable. Maybe set your arms alongside you on the floor, let your shoulders soften.
will press our way up and to release these legs, you can somewhat, somewhat lean back and kind of, <laughs> kind of windshield wiper the legs if that works, or maybe you just straighten the legs and pause, but it might feel good to move after that. So you can try that out. It's normal to feel a little weird in the hips. We did some major internal rotation in one leg. And so that can feel a little sore um, afterwards. All right, and then we'll go to the other side. So this time we'll have our right leg back, right shin somewhat parallel to the right side of the room, the right wall in the room, and then the left shin will be parallel to the front edge of your mat more or less but then instead of having the legs kind of close in towards one another you can experiment tonight with having them a bit more open a bit more carving a 90 degree angle between each leg um, or each knee and then you have your bolster and you can Start your descent. Maybe you just hang out part way, breathe a little bit, and eventually lower all the way down. Maybe you stay up here. Ooh. And so because we hold this pose a bit longer tonight, um, you can really take your time easing into it. You don't have to rush to fully uh, rest on your prop. Be here for another minute, so do make yourself a bit more comfortable if you need, or maybe go a little deeper into the pose if you feel ready to do so. And we'll make our way up. And again, you can come out of this however you like. You can shift back and windshield wiper your knees if you want, or let your legs go long. And so I got a request for low back. And when my low back is tight, um, spinal twists really, really help. And specifically, a uh, spinal twist where the legs are supported by a prop. So if you have a prop, anything you have, um, I happen to have this bolster, but it could be a book, a blanket, folded, a pillow. Have a prop, when you lie down, have that prop next to you, to the left, just outside your mat. 
And we'll just pause for a moment on our back, feeling the floor lifting up to hold us and feeling our body like liquid kind of spreading across the floor like a puddle of water. Notice that there's parts of your back that are resisting spreading out. Can you let some of those maybe tighter pieces of your back start to soften here? And then from there, we'll gather our knees into the chest and massage the back of the hips across the mat, rocking right and left, right and left. We'll keep our knees bent into the chest and open the arms wide on the floor. And then we'll rotate the legs all the way over to the left to land on that prop. Now, depending on the size of your prop, if it's bulky, you might just wedge it under your bottom leg if it's bulky and long. Or if it's a little smaller prop, it might make more sense to sandwich it between your knees. You can try both on and see what feels best. We'll linger here in this spinal twist. In addition to a prop between your knees or under your knee, you can take a prop under your head as a pillow. And then the last little, I'm gonna move a little more, a bit more on my mat. The last little deepening here could be to Push your elbows into the floor and crawl your head and shoulders even more to the left side of your mat. That can make more of a twist in the upper back body. You can gaze to the right. We'll take our last few breaths here, breathing into the space of the heart. We'll take a deep breath in together. And as you exhale, return to your back and you'll pause for just a moment on your back before we change sides. Take it in, notice what this moment has to offer you. And then we'll do the other side. I'm gonna move my body a little bit away from the wall, um, just because I don't wanna crash into the wall. And then you'll take your prop over to the right side, just off your mat. And then like before, we'll first gather the knees into the chest and then rock across the back of the hips. And then you'll keep your legs into your chest, arms open wide, and then let your legs rotate to your prop, either under your bottom leg or in between the knees. Especially if you have a tight low back, in between the knees might be best. And then the last little adjustment you can do is to Dig your elbows into the ground and just wiggle your head and shoulders more to the right side of your mat. And that'll snuggle your left shoulder blade behind your back.
We'll take a final breath here, big breath in. And as you exhale, return to your back. Again, you can set your feet on the floor or legs long on the mat. Just check in with yourself. Notice the aftermath, what has opened up inside you, what feels bright and light. Then we'll lay on our belly. So you could just simply roll to your belly from where you're at. And move your props away from the side. Just gonna check. Okay. We'll get into our shoulder next, the front of the shoulder and the pec muscle. And when we lie on our belly, we're going to have our right hand at the height of our right shoulder. But if you know you have something going on with your shoulder or you have a little tighter shoulder today, Maybe you angle that arm more in line with your waist instead of your shoulder. So you'll be on your belly. And you got your right arm either at the height of your shoulder, palm faces the ground, or maybe it's a little lower. Maybe it's more in line with your waist. Take your uh, left hand to the ground and then push into the floor with your left hand. Roll to the right. So you're now stacking leg on top of leg shoulder on top of shoulder. And then you can push your fingers, your left fingers into the floor to help kind of lean you back, kind of give you more of that emphasis of this stretch. You can even crawl your right hand away from you to open even more here. What I like about this is it's up to you how much you want to stretch. You can push back, kind of roll back a lot, or you could lean more into the floor. Take our last three breaths here. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, return to your belly and you'll just pause. Take a moment to relax and maybe wag your hips from side to side. And then we'll do that on the other side. So you'll take that left arm either in line with the left shoulder or more in line with your hip or your uh, waist. And then we'll push into the right hand and roll back. And you'll stack your legs. Notice your right shoulders over your left shoulder, your right hips on top of your left hip. Just relax into it. Letting your head stay really heavy. We'll take one more breath in and exhale, return to your belly and just pause once more. Notice your two shoulders.
And then we'll flip onto our back yet again. And this time I would recommend having a prop close by, something to go under your hips, like a book or a block or a bolster to elevate your hips eventually. Going to take, well, we're gonna start with not elevating our hips. We're gonna start with uh, crossing our right leg on top of our left, like you're sitting and drinking coffee. And then you'll let your knees fall into your chest and you can grab either the front knee and pull both legs in to your chest that way, or you can curl up briefly. Maybe you can grab your back knee and then pull both knees into your chest. You can also stick a prop behind your head if you feel like your neck is straining here. And then the third option is to grab the outer edges of each foot and pull down, pull them down to your outer hips. And then can you pick up your head, draw your chin into your throat, lay the back of your skull down so it lengthens to the back of the mat. The back of the neck, we want to keep it really long here. We'll be here a little bit longer. Make sure you're separating your teeth and relaxing your face. Take one more breath here. And before you come out, remembering your right leg is on top, so we'll make sure the opposite's on top next. Go ahead and come out and pause, knees bent or legs long. Just soak it in. And we'll do the other side, crossing this time the left leg on top. Folding both knees into the chest. Maybe you reach for your front knee, pull it in, or maybe you curl up, grab your back knee and pull it in. Maybe it feels interesting to grab the outside edges of your feet and pull them to your outer hips. And then make sure your back of your neck, you're honoring your back of the neck. Maybe if you feel the chin jutting up to the ceiling, you either put a prop under your head and or you pick up your head, draw your chin into your throat and then lay 
your skull down to the back of the neck and lengthens to the back of the mat. Take three more breaths here. Then you'll unwind all together and check in with yourself once more. Now I invite you to grab that prop. Any, oh, any prop will do, you know, even a folded blanket works. I'm gonna use a block tonight. You'll bridge your hips up, take that prop uh, under your pelvis, and you want it about as high as maybe a yoga block, uh, the lowest setting on a yoga block. It doesn't need to be very big. We're going to stretch one leg long, and the other foot will be flat on the floor. Now you might stay here, and you might feel plenty uh, sensation in your left hip, the leg that's long, or you might play with now, and or you might feel low back in this moment. We don't want to feel any low back tension. So in order to feel less low back tension and even more of a hip stretch, you can also bring your right knee into your chest. And that can add to the stretch. So you have choices, either foot up or foot down. Um, want to feel some sort of ease and comfort when we're here. So choose the most easeful version for you. The feet are relaxed. The hands are holding the knee, but they're also somewhat relaxed. And it might be helpful to imagine you have a lung in your left hip and you're breathing into that lung. We'll take one more breath here. And then it's really important that we come out of this a certain way. You want to take both feet flat to the floor first before we change sides. You want to find a neutral place. You want to find this opportunity to soften and feel sym symmetry uh, in our whole body right now. Or I guess be symmetrical in our whole body. We may not feel symmetrical yet. And then let's go and stretch the other side. So you can either leave your left foot on the floor, extend your right leg long, or you can bend your left knee into your chest, interlace your fingers around that left knee and extend your right leg long and really breathe into that right hip flexor, or the belly of the right thigh.
And the more you pull that knee in towards your body, the more that can help relax your low back. Be here for three more breaths. And then we'll set our feet firmly on the ground, knees bent, bridge our hips off whatever prop we were using. You can pause on your back. You can also let your knees sway side to side. You could also scoop your knees into your chest and rock side to side, giving yourself this moment to recalibrate. All right, and it is time for our final pose, Shavasana. So go ahead and make your way into whatever version of that that works for your body. You know, um, something behind the knees is really helpful for the low back. If you don't have any prop to go under the knees tonight, you can bend your knees, set your feet roughly as wide as your mat, and then draw your knees together like they're not knee. This can be really nice for the low back. If you're seeking some grounding tonight, you can rest one hand over your navel, the other hand near your heart. Just allow the weight of your hands to anchor you a little more to the earth. And we'll be here for a few minutes. So do make yourself comfortable so you can receive this rest. Shavasana. Start to become aware of our surroundings. You'll begin to deepen your breath and maybe you start to reemerge gradually by taking a full body stretch. Eventually we'll make our way up from Shavasana to a comfortable seat. 
And we'll take a moment as we sit to draw our fingertips down to the floor, remembering that little bubble of white light we created around our body, like a little barrier, a little cocoon. I'm going to slowly take that off. So you can front fingertips on the ground, palms can face up and either closed eyes or soft gaze, just start to remember, remember this little covering of white light surrounding your, your body. Start to pull it up slowly, scooping it back up into your palms, letting it float back at, up to the sky. We'll start to feel that light meeting above your head, fingertips reaching overhead. You're feeling that warmth. You'll take a couple handfuls of that light and bring it into your heart. And then you'll gather your hands together at the heart and bow the thinking mind to the caring heart. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to share your practice. It is truly an honor to serve you. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Peace, peace, peace.